learning is a social act. This is something I've always known, but I had never been challenged on before. The key to community is vulnerability. And according to Brene Brown, staying vulnerable is a risk we have to take if we want to experience connection. Risk is a journey of discovery. Students and teachers navigate through uncharted waters, encountering both challenges and opportunities for growth. Let me tell you about a risk I took in my classroom. Let's travel back to August of 2022. I had just embarked on a voyage to a new country for a new job. Through a set of circumstances, suddenly, less than a week before the students were starting their new school year, I was going to be teaching two upper level exam courses that I had never taught before. The first one was an AP class that I had taught before. So I thought, great, no problem, smooth sailing. I was also teaching another AP course, one that was new to me. So I thought, okay, this is going to be a learning year, but I'll figure it out. And finally, I was teaching the second year of an IV DP course. I had never taught IV before. And the teacher who had my class for the first year of their program was a beloved long timer who had retired. My students who were then in their senior year loved their teacher. These were big shoes to fill. I knew this was going to be challenging, and it was. My students saw me as a disruption. They were not meeting me halfway. As I spent long hours crafting lessons and activities, I was met with reluctance. The warmth that I offered to them was met with an icy disposition. I felt like I was treading water and going nowhere. And sometimes I just felt like I was drowning. We've all had these moments. Education is failure sometimes, but it's through failure that you find success. Even so, it doesn't feel good to feel like you're not doing a good job. I felt like I was letting my students down. It's a sinking feeling, thinking my class just wants their old teacher back. So I decided to take a risk, just as Brene Brown suggests. I embraced vulnerability. I was open with my students about my struggles and about where I was at, something I hadn't considered before. It's scary to share with students that I was feeling like a failure. I decided to listen to their thoughts and their feedback more consciously, and that provided me navigation. It gave me guidance, but I still held them accountable. They needed to meet me halfway. So through this, class became more of a conversation about what we all needed from each other. And through this, we were able to chart a course together. This took form in a lot of different ways. Sometimes through one-on-one -on -one conversation, but this completely transformed my teaching. I created intentional space and structures in order to listen and to respond, to reflect and to adapt. Because I gave them vulnerability, they gave me their vulnerability. They let me know where they were at. They shared their struggles with me. Strengths that they wanted to harness, worries that they had, and because of that, they felt like they could ask me for things that they needed. 
I was then able to support them. Through this process, we cultivated a strong community. We were learning together. We were growing together. And we had success together. At the end of the year, I had survived. And I was so proud of my students. They thrived. Through taking the risk of being vulnerable with each other, we were able to share our concerns, our struggles, our worries, and connect. This is what allowed us to create a strong community. So when you go back to your classrooms, how can you use vulnerability to connect with your students? What structures can you put in place for feedback and to adapt? For student choice, for being able to listen and to respond. Maybe things just aren't working either. And vulnerability might be the answer. Because one thing I learned from last year is that learning is a social act. Thank you.